If you're looking at the growth, over the last couple of years, we see doubling of the market every year. So in 2012, there were only 3 billion for the four tags together, while last year, as I mentioned, we are already at almost 35 billion dollars. What are now the market trends? What is driving this increase in, in crowdfunding investments? There are a couple of market trends. And the first one that we observe in the markets is really the lowering of the barriers for entrepreneurs to participate. Why? Because there is more awareness for crowdfunding. There has been some, some market studies uh, recently in Belgium where we see that already one out of two people in the street know what crowdfunding is. And on the entrepreneur side, seven out of ten think, yeah, I might do one day crowdfunding. So it's becoming more and more general. People are, become, are starting to find it quite important. There is also more market knowledge, so there are now specific consultancy companies who are setting up um, help, help um, services to companies who want to do crowdfunding. So there, there is really also the, the, the barriers are lowering because entrepreneurs who want to do a crowdfunding campaign, they also know that they will have a lot more support than a couple of years ago. And the last thing, also the platforms are professionalizing both on the investor and the entrepreneur side. Automation is, is quite important in the sector and with a couple of years of development we already also achieved quite some more professional services or at least that's something that we are striving for and we hope that we are, we are managing. On the investor side there is a quest for financial return. So with the very low interest rates at the moment, investors they have to look for more and more risky assets as uh, bonds and other financial instruments with fixed interest rates they are not bring them any return, so they are going to look for shares and also crowdfunding where they will hope for a big financial return the day that the startup goes from, from a really small uh, team of five people to the next Facebook or next LinkedIn. That's what every investor hopes that he will invest in this next uh, unicorn and success story. There is also in many countries adapted regulation, so where regulators really put in place specific laws for crowdfunding that they can uh, raise more money than before without uh, having to do a lot of compliance stuff. And there is also in many countries fiscal intensive incentives sorry, for investors who invest in startups and they will benefit from a tax reduction. In Belgium on these two last points we are a little bit behind. So the government, they announced some adapted regulation, they also announced fiscal uh, incentives with the tax shelter, but for the moment, via crowdfunding is not possible yet, because there is no uh, regulatory framework for it. So here they announced it, but the laws, they are lagging behind. So end of this year, we hope and we think that there will be some progress uh, on this side in Belgium. Now if we compare crowdfunding, and then more specifically, equity crowdfunding, so where you become a shareholder of a company, with other types of, of uh, financing possibilities, then we see that on worldwide, in Europe and in Belgium, equity crowdfunding is still quite small, but it's becoming more and more significant. Those figures, I just found them on the internet by different sources, it's to give you some order of magnitude. But for instance, in Belgium, we have Last year, 2015, about 2 million of euros had invested via equity crowdfunding, while business angels invested altogether 20 million. So there we see we have a ratio of 1 on 10, which is actually becoming quite significant for something that was very, very small a couple of years ago. And where we see that also venture capitalists and business angels are becoming more and more interested in crowdfunding to see how they can integrate themselves with this new uh, type of financing. I will come back to that later. Now, a startup who starts and who needs financing and who grows over a couple of years, he will have a financing cycle. So in different phases of the life of the startup and the company later on, they will need other players who will finance their growth. And it all starts with the three Fs, the family, friends and fools who want to know the entrepreneur and who want to support him and they will, they will invest first in the company. And what do we see on this graph? We see on the vertical axis the uh, cash flow of the company. 
being negative in the beginning, but after a couple of years becoming positive. And on the horizontal axis, we see the different development stages. So typically, a project starting at, at zero with nothing, it's what we, what we call pre-seed. Once they have some proof of concept, they come in the seed stage, so they know, okay, we have something to the market to offer, and they will grow to a startup, they will become afterwards scale-up, where they come into early growth, and then once the company has really some validation from the market as uh, recurring customers, then we can really speak about expansion development and afterwards company will be big maturity. And during all those phases, there are different people, different investors who will interact with the company. As I said in the beginning, we have the three Fs, and afterwards, who comes into play? Business angels. So those are people um, who have quite some, some fortune and who know the sector very well and who think, I'm going to invest personally in this uh, project because I know the sector and I think it's really some innovative, innovative, um, innovative uh, venture. So they start typically of between 20,000 and 100,000 that they invest in, in the company. Next, for bigger amounts, we're going to venture capitalists. They invest between 100,000 and 1 to 2 million. They come into play once the company really has already some, some proof of concept, has a product and is really growing. And they will help the company, for instance, from going from Belgium to other countries in Europe. Between the three Fs and the business angels, we see typically in the market that there is an equity gap. So there, there is a phase in the life of a company where they need money to further develop, but where they don't find uh, investors because they don't really have that proof of concept. They know, I have something which is quite unique, I want to place it in the market, but the business agents and the venture capitalists, they think, no, for us there is not, not enough proof, so we want to wait a little bit more to see if there is really some, um, some progress going on in the next couple of months. And there is where crowdfunding comes into play. So if an entrepreneur is blocked in his financing to finance, him, to finance his growth, he can now with this alternative of crowdfunding talk to the market directly and to test his idea to see, okay, is there some market validation who, who, which he can uh, achieve thanks to crowdfunding. And what we often see, and we'll talk about it later in the, in the case study, is that if a crowdfunding campaign is successful, Business angels and venture capitalists, they now have a proof that there is really a market uh, which is waiting for this product. So they come then, they say, okay, I see the validation, I see that there is a proof, and I will also step in now. So crowdfunding can accelerate uh, this financing, and it's those three lines you see here. We think that crowdfunding can be somewhere between the pessimistic view of a professional, who thinks that the startup will be break even at a later point in time, and the entrepreneur who is quite positive, um, that's his nature. It's we think that via crowdfunding there is some middle way where crowdfunding can accelerate this process and can lead him to uh, early success. Now, we are going to the co financing, so financing via crowdfunding and via other players. It has some advantages, but first of all, I think we have to talk about the advantages from crowdfunding itself. So why do entrepreneurs want to do a crowdfunding campaign? First of all, it's of course because of fundraising, they need money. And via um, equity crowdfunding platforms in Belgium, they can, um, they can raise typically until 100,000 quite quickly, without a lot of regulation. But with a prospectus, they can even raise a lot more, they can raise even one or two millions. So fundraising is definitely an aspect where people or entrepreneurs um, want to do crowdfunding. It's diversification of funding. So if you have more different investors, when the company is growing, they also need more follow-up investments. And if there are different sources, they can vary and they can see, okay, who can also invest in the next round. For um, crowdfunding, we see also that um, successful ventures who have been invested um, by the platform via crowdfunding investors, in follow-up rounds, the crowd typically also participates. So for instance, we had recently um, a, a quite successful uh, startup. They raised 100,000 last year via the crowd, and this year they do a second round, and the crowd invested for 50,000 again, just in a private campaign with the people that already invested in the first, at the first moment. 
there is a lot of visibility. So crowdfunding is not only fundraising, but it's also about marketing. You have about two months that you're live on the platform, and you can interact a lot with different people. We have a uh, database of 35,000 members, so if we send out newsletters of your project, a lot of people will see it, and a lot of people who will be interested will also click on it. After the campaign, you also have a community of ambassadors, so people who are invested in the project and who really are fond of the, of the, of the entrepreneurs of the project, otherwise they wouldn't have invested. And you can rely on them also for other things. We also have entrepreneurs who after the campaign ask um, their community of investors if for different phases uh, and for different um, opinions that they need. So for instance, a package, typically they developed three or four types of packages and they just send a vote um, to, the, to their investors and ask, okay, which package do you prefer? So they can really test some small ideas and to take a decision. And last but not least, it's the concept of validated learning. I don't know who of you has read um, The Lead Startup by Eric Ries. It's a book um, actually talking about validated learning. And the concept of the book is that for startups, their unit of progress, so where you can measure progress, is not revenue, revenue that is growing, but it's validated learning. So it's actually testing the different hypotheses of the entrepreneurs to see, okay, what is the right pricing? what is the right strategy to go into the market and to do small tests with which they can learn. And this is, crowdfunding is, a, is a big opportunity for that because during those two months, as I said, you will, the, the project will be seen by a lot of people. So via online marketing and via tracking tools, you can also test very well different assumptions of the business plan. So we often have 10,000 10, 10, 10, of people who see campaigns. So there is also a big learning opportunity for entrepreneurs there. We also have to talk about the drawbacks of crowdfunding because it's not all, all positive. A, a big drawback, of specifically, for, specifically for entrepreneurs, is the uncertainty. So they, if they launch a campaign, it will be quite some work, and they are not sure that they will raise and they will uh, be successful. So there is uncertainty which might um, frame people to not do a uh, the campaign. There is also the negative side of visibility. And it's a fear that everybody has, it's, it's the public humiliation. If your project is a, a failure, then everybody will also have seen it. Secondly, also, on the visibility side, there are quite some projects who think that they are, are quite unique and they don't want to share the information with their competitors. So they say, if we are going to public, to publish our project on the platform, um, yeah, we will also in, uh, inform the competitors. That's, that's something that they don't want to do. After the investment, there is limited support on the crowdfunding platforms. Our role is to do a lot of campaigns, and we don't have the, sort, the resources to follow up and to help the entrepreneurs after the campaign. So there, from a crowdfunding platform and from the investors, there is quite limited support. And also, from the crowdfunding platform, there is no active management of the investment. So, in a couple of years, if everything goes well, the crowdfunding platform itself will not go actively uh, pursue an exit. So they don't have the, also there the resources to uh, go to the entrepreneurs to say, okay, to get a review, we will find a buyer for, for the project. And last but not least, it's a big myth, but a, pro a crowdfunding campaign is quite time-consuming for the entrepreneur. <laughs> so many entrepreneurs who come uh, to us, they think that it will go quite, quite, uh, quite okay, it will be quite simple, but it's actually during two, three months quite hard work to convince people to talk about their project every day, all day. So that leads us to the principle of co-investment, where we'll actually combine best of both worlds, of professional investors being uh, business agents and uh, venture capitalists, with the advantages of crowdfunding. And this is the main principle of my background, our crowdfunding platform, where when we do a crowdfunding campaign, we also we also ask the entrepreneur to have a professional party on board who will be able to do this follow-up that we cannot do. So what we can offer is validation of the concept, we can offer the promotion, the marketing, we can offer a lot of learning opportunities to the entrepreneur, but we cannot manage as a professional the investment of the crowd. So there, this professional investor is quite important in uh, the selection, also in the negotiation, the valuation for instance, 
and then afterwards also for the exit. So it's really a win-win for, for everybody. Now, the proof of the, of the, the pudding is of course in the heat and see, are there already some co-financing uh, initiatives going on? And yes, it's more and more the case. For instance, BMW, which is a, a Flemish uh, governmental uh, funding body, so they finance uh, startups, they work together with partners. And they have been working together with business angels for a couple of years. That the business angels, if they bring um, files to BMW, that BMW quasi automatically will accept them. And then they say, okay, if there is for for instance, 30,000 euros of a business angel, then we can give a loan to the company of 100,000 euros. And recently they decided also to include crowdfunding platforms as a partner. So also now we will have the opportunity via PMD to, next to our funding that they raise on the platform, also get quasi-automatically a loan from, from the government. Second way is um, venture capital funds who are integrating uh, crowdfunding in their process and we invest alongside the crowd as kind of philosophy. It's a philosophy of Inventures. Inventures is a venture capital fund also managed by, by, by Macroinvest. So of course we are, uh, are promoting this idea. So and there the, the philosophy is that if Inventures invest a part will also go to the crowd because we really think that it has a lot of advantages. And a third um, example is uh, venture capital funds who go into hybrid structures and who invest themselves directly in the crowd, uh, directly in companies, sorry, but who will also um, look at the deal flow on the crowdfunding platforms and to see if there is something relevant for them and invest also through platforms. Now to end just a small case study. It's about Ariching. Ariching is a, a startup who has um, been on our platform a couple of years ago, two years ago. So in there, actually they started with crowdfunding, but thanks to crowdfunding they were able also to find other, other uh, financing uh, solutions. So iReaching, uh, very briefly, is an application that manages incoming calls. So um, an incoming call, for instance if it's an unknown number, you can directly reschedule it to a, a calling center. So if it's commercial calls, people will get a lot of commercial cold calls. They can just reroute it and don't be bothered by it. It's one of their solutions, but there are, there are many more. So when they started in 2013, we were the first version of their, of their project. Um, they had, had some nominations, and then in uh, October 2000, sorry, in January, no, in February 2015, they launched a crowdfunding campaign where they raised 75,000 euros. So it was their first um, financer. Afterwards, they uh, were able to find a business angel who invested um, some more money. Thanks to that, they had this claim pay loan. And thanks to that, they got a bank loan. Thanks to that, they got uh, a Flyo subsidy of 250,000 euros. So, in brief, with one euro of crowdfunding, resulted in seven euro of additional funding thanks to different, um, thanks to different other uh, funding bodies. So it's really step by step. And starting with something you can reach, um, you can build further on it and, and find more sources. So, this was the presentation. What are the main takeaways uh, for today? So, what you have to know is that crowdfunding comes in different forms. So, there are four different types of crowdfunding, as I explained. It's a growing financing solution, doubling almost every year. Crowdfunding is ideal for validated learning and as a marketing instrument for entrepreneurs. Co-investment model is necessary. Crowdfunding just by itself doesn't work. It becomes more and more embedded in the financing mix. And with all those evolutions, it's also sure that we will have an interesting future uh, for crowdfunding. So, thank you very much. If you have some questions, you can uh, ask them now or see me afterwards or go to our website and back.
sure that crowdfunding is a lot for um, products, so that's the reward of crowdfunding. But for digital platforms, it can also be a good way for the marketing to really uh, find money to let the platform grow, but also to have the marketing necessary to, uh, to really launch a big scale. So it's also exactly as possible. Um, I've seen a crowdfunding platform as well now for real estate. Um, do you see other applications or areas where you see crowd investments popping up where you wouldn't expect something like that two or three years ago? Uh, that's a good question. In Belgium we don't see it yet. So in Belgium it's quite, um, as the market is still quite small, it's uh, mainly related to just equity and lending. And there is indeed some real estate, but in Belgium we don't see a lot of uh, specific crowdfunding platforms who are just for one solution. Uh, I think internationally there might be some examples, but I can't um, give you one <coughs> just uh, like this. I can't. Uh, probably there are some. Yeah. Okay, I will. Uh,